Okay, so now we're going to talk about a generalization. What we've talked about so far is the simple model that we're going to have you implement in your in your lab. But lighting, of course, can be more complicated. So take a look at these two pieces of cloth. So the one on the left is closer to something that you might be able to do with with diffuse lighting, the kind of thing we talked about. As we get to more complicating lighting effects. There can be more general than just this Fong lighting. So in general, if we consider a little surface point and we consider a light, we can consider not just the angle between the light and the viewing direction, which is what we've been using so far, but we could in general say the incoming light direction can be parameterized in spherical polar coordinates by two angles, this angle here and this angle here, right? So we have this, this is this angle between this axis and here, right? And, and then the, off of the, coming down from the, from the top of the pole of this hemisphere. And then this angle is this much around and this much. So in general, I have a 4D function that says, what's my incoming light direction and where's my surface? And so far we've written something that's just using uh, the angle between these two and not worried about it. So this general 4D function can say, for an incoming direction, for an outgoing direction, what's the fraction of light that reflects off of this surface? So what are we going to do with that? Well, we could write this more general function and we could draw them. So here's this Fong reflection model we've been talking about. Here's our incoming light direction. Here's our normal. This perfectly spherical piece is our diffuse lobe. Um, the piece that juts out here on the reflection direction, this is the specular lobe, right? So these are the two coefficients. But we could have surfaces which have some other kind of shape in the way that the reflection is. This is only plotting 3D out of this 4D function. Uh, 2D, I guess 2D out of the 4D function, because we have one incoming direction set already. So we're, we're looking at the output power in this two-dimensional slice of the 4D function. Here, the greatest power is not even on the reflection direction. And there are, in fact, real surfaces that behave this way. So there's a lot lost by this model. In this model, we can essentially grow the, the specular component and grow how much is the diffuse, but we can't, we can't get all of these shapes. So more interesting surface properties require a full BRDI. So here's an example of one place where this comes up. So isotropic means everything the same in one direction. Anisotropic means not isotropic. So we're not the same in all directions. So, so far we ignore this spin. But if I have surfaces for which these spin directions around the normal come into play, then I can get renderings that look like this instead of like this. So what real world objects have this? Uh, typically things with brushed metal, hub, hubcaps, things like, things like this might, might have this kind of effect and we might want to achieve it. So we might need a more general theory. How do we capture these things off of real world objects? They build devices like this. I can move the light around to any angle. I, I have some detector I can move around. I can turn the, the surface of the object. And then I measure how much light reflects off. And I get these kind of plots. Right? Imagine you're doing your physics experiment. You find out how much light comes off and then you, you fit some kind of surface. So here's a real device. So because it's a 4D function, I need four degrees of freedom. So this arm can spin here. The object itself can spin here. There's a rotational angle here and a rotational angle here. And this, this thing was built to capture BRDFs. So you wouldn't be putting the bunny here. This is the real Stanford bunny, by the way. It's a, it's a ceramic model that was scanned to get the model that everybody uses in computer graphics now. Um, anyway, you would put a flat piece of paint sample here or something, and then you could capture the BRDF by putting your lights and cameras and all the possible angles and, and getting them. So here's examples, not captured from that same gantry, but captured from something of all kinds of different renderings. So when we talk about what is the BRDF of a surface, it's pretty common to render, render a sphere to try to understand what the BRDF looks like, um, even though the function is even higher dimensional. Than that. So here's a bunch of spheres, different surfaces, different reflections, different what are you trying to get. So BRDFs are a general way to model what's going on at the surface. We're using a simpler analytic model so that we don't have to store a 4D lookup table.